I got a quick video for you guys tonight. Um, this one kind of is a, almost like a request. I, I didn't realize so many people were going to be interested in how I had polished the crank and the bike. Uh, it was just something I did for fun. Uh, usually I polish them up a little bit, but I spent a little extra time on it this time. And it turned out like really good. But uh, apparently people are really interested in how I did it. Because like I don't send my stuff out to a machine shop. or I just kind of do everything in the garage. And... Um, it just kind of works. It's, it's, it's fun to tinker and try little things and see what you can do for yourself. But, uh, yeah, so I got my crank out of my truck. That's the original 5.7 Hemi crank that was in my truck before I built the 6.1 for it. Um, because the motor for the, or the crank for the motor here is assembled and my spare is sitting in another set of cases down there. So I can't, I can't show you real good how I did it on any of the, 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 the two bike cranks that I have. So I'm going to show you on the truck crank. So just pretend that that's got half as many journals on it, I guess. <laughs> um, well, we'll just pretend it's twice as big. Um, yeah, so real simple supplies. It's just a little bit of time and effort. And I'll show you what I got going on and then real quick how I do this. So to start with, um, this crank is not in bad shape. This crank's actually in really good shape. But you can tell the journals are just... They're just used so you can see that they're just i mean like i said they look good but they're just they're just used they're not all marred up i don't need to go at this thing real hard with a bunch of abrasives or nothing but you'll visually see the difference you can kind of see on that one the way the light's hitting it it's just not super shiny it's got a little bit of dulling going on um like i said this one's in real good shape all we're going to do is take some very very fine emery emery paper you just get the stuff in rolls tear off what you need so real fine emery cloth. I wouldn't suggest anything coarser than, um, sorry, 400 grit. If the crank really needs some nicks or some scoring taken out of it, we're not looking to remachine anything. We're just trying to polish. Um, by definition of what we're doing here, we are going to be removing minuscule amounts of material. However, I don't believe that's enough to affect what we're going to be doing with oil clearances and whatnot. But uh, if you really need to get heavy after one of the, journals with some nicks or something like that the emery cloth should take care of you anything more than that i would suggest getting the crank cut but we're looking at just kind of spiffing up cranks that are in generally good condition or maybe have real minor imperfections maybe a little bit of junk went through a bearing or something but i would start with real fine emery cloth and you don't like i said you don't need to go real aggressive and then the polish this is all i use mother's mag and aluminum polish nothing fancy and like I said, we're not looking for super heavy abrasives. We're just going to be cleaning up the surface of this, making it kind of that mirror glass chrome finish. So now I'll kind of show you the technique. All we need is a little chemical brush. These things you can get Harbor Freight. I think a pack of whatever was like a pack of 50 was like three bucks or something like that. Disposable, use them for what you want and shit can them. But I'm going to get the camera set up now so I can get my other hand free, and I'm going to show you how I get this set up for polishing, and it just takes a little bit of time. All right. What I'm going to start with is the emery cloth. We're just going to, we're going to tear off a piece that's big enough to get all the way around the journal. So we're just going to give her a rip. And then we want to cut, you know, cut or tear this into roughly the width of the journal that we need, plus a little extra. So right about there. So now we got our piece that's roughly as wide as a journal. <clears throat> now, I don't want to do this dry. I mean, you can if you really need some uh, some effort on this thing. But uh, this journal is actually good, and I want to reuse this crank at some point, so I'm not going to put a bunch of effort into uh, reshaping this thing. So I'm going to actually coat this with a little bit of WD-40, just a little bit of lube, and then we'll go from there. Like I could use a little more WD-40. What we're going to do is wrap this around the journal. Now, that's the start. Next step, all we need is a length of paracord. However long you want is up to you. But we just need to make sure we get about three to four wraps around the journal. There's one, well, one, two, 
there's three and you just need enough to hold on to now all we're gonna do is take our two ends and we're just going back and forth we're letting the uh, paracord wrap and unwrap around the journal while keeping the emery cloth on the journal wrapped all the way around it now the longer you got the paracord obviously the longer stroke you can make going all the way around the journal and then the paracord itself is actually going across the full width of the journal you can kind of see it moving back and forth you can steer that a little bit just by pulling from one side to the other of the paracord while you're going back and forth and like i said this is totally up to you as to far how far you want to go depending on how bad the journal is or whatever you're trying to doctor up for our purposes right now I'm just showing you how to get some polishing done. So if your crank is in really, really good shape, like this crank didn't really need the uh, the emery paper step done, but I'd figure I'd show you that's what I do if the crank has kind of got some nicks. So there, we would say, okay, we got our journal looking smooth, how we like it, any imperfections are gone. Next step, take a little chemical brush and some polishing compound. And just brush the whole journal all the way around side to side you can't have too much it ain't gonna matter get the whole thing covered good enough now this is the part that i said it's gonna take time because you're gonna do a little bit and then you gotta apply more polishing compound you're gonna start with another fresh piece of rag and you're going to do the process again. And you keep going until you get the result you want. So this is totally up to you how much effort you want to put into this. This is where now I'll just take some blue shop towels. And I'll cut them into strips that are the same width as the journal. Just like I did with the emery cloth. So I'll cut one quick. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in here with the uh, towel. Wrap it around. Take our paracord, same thing, same process, different material. Get around here two, three, four times, whatever. Ideally, I'd like a little longer paracord for this crank because the journal is so much bigger around than the bike crank. Uh, normally with this particular paracord, I can go one more wrap on the bike journal and they're also narrower. So I'm basically almost the full width across in paracord. And that way you get full coverage with the, uh, the paracord itself going side to side. Make sure you get a good polish, good even polish. Now it's going to start out kind of goopy because you got a lot of polish in there. And I'm using this real light pressure, just enough to get that thing to spin. And just keep going back and forth. And every once in a while, the paracord or the rag will get all wadded up and under the paracord. And it'll turn into a mess. Just start over. But we'll go a little bit until we feel the polish, polishing compounds pretty much wore out. Then you'll feel like very little to no resistance on that rag. But we'll go at it for a little bit. Ain't gonna hurt, because by the time I reuse this crank, I'll probably do all this polishing again anyways. So we're just getting a head start on one journal. And what I like about this mother's polish is, uh, it's for aluminum, you know, aluminum, metal polish, whatever. But it's not super abrasive. So we're not, like I said, we're not looking to remachine this thing a whole lot anyway. But that's where it takes a little bit of time you're not removing a bunch of material at one shot we don't want that so now we'll undo that now this piece of rag is going to be junk so we'll toss that that's why i keep just cutting up in strips now we'll take another one we'll clean her up we'll get a, a sneak peek of what we got to work with It's already noticeably better than the other ones on the crank. Now you guys are going to make me end up finishing this whole crank just to have something to do.
just trying to get the rest of the uh, polishing compound off so you guys get the uh, full effect of what it actually looks like. And after you do this, you are going to have to clean the crank because you can see there's polishing compounds sitting in the, uh, the oil holes. You can't have that. This thing's going to have to get sprayed out and hosed down and really cleaned up. All right, let's see if I can get you in to show you real good here. Okay, we'll look at some of the other ones here first, just so you can kind of see. This is the one that you can see, obviously, is just kind of dulled up a little bit. Kind of the same going on there. We get over to the one we did here. You can see it's actually starting to mirror up. It's coming around really good, really fast. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spend a little more time on this thing. I'll give myself a half hour. No more than a half hour per journal, we'll say. So I'm going to work on this for another half hour, and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. So here we are, a half hour later, and just from this angle itself, you can just about see the difference in them journals between the one I polished and the, one that's, or the ones that are not. I'll try to get you in close here. See that surface? I mean, it's smooth. Just not quite mirror polish finish. And we got this guy. You can almost see the difference just in the quality of the reflection. But that's it. That's all there is to uh, polishing up a crank. Um, it, <laughs> this, is, this is the type of stuff I do to just pass time. Like I'm out here watching some Street Outlaws videos or whatever. This is the stuff I do to just pass the time and, you know, have fun out in the garage. So if you're into doing stuff yourself, I mean, there's no reason you can't just tear into things and start, you know, getting after it. There's no right or wrong way. Well, I guess there is kind of a wrong way. But um, there's no limit to what you can or can't do yourself. That's all there is to it. You, I mean, you can pay someone else to do this. A lot of people just go write checks to have stuff done. But the satisfaction of doing it yourself, even if it's not quite exactly perfect... Satisfaction is worth it to me. Um, I got no, I got no interest in taking my stuff to someone else's shop, but that's it. You know, you know, a half hour per journal. You could do an entire motorcycle crank. Um, I was dragging my feet between doing the uh, the mains and all the rod journals on the motorcycle crank. Uh, I don't know, a couple hours. You know, throw on a movie and just start polishing. That's all there is to it. So there you have it, guys. You know, home garage. Crank Polishing 101. Like I said, I, I didn't think I'd get the, uh, uh, the reaction I did just from just kind of cluing at the fact that I polished the crank or showing the pictures of how it looked when it was done. And man, there's something flying over pretty low. You hear that? It's the Ruskies. So uh, bottom line is, guys, uh, if, you, if you want to take your stuff to someone's shop or pay to have your motors built, whatever, that's fine. That's not my thing. That's kind of not what this channel is even about. Um, if you like watching the stuff I'm doing just kind of for um, just general entertainment knowledge to kind of see how people are doing things, um, cool. I hope you watch this stuff and you decide that you can do it yourself. That's all I want to see is more people out doing things. Um, there's too many people that write checks with big mouths, and I'm kind of anti that. So that's why I put so much out there, show you what I do, and uh, we got to keep it light. We got to have fun. Uh, that's why we do these things. This whole this whole thing is a hobby. But for now, I'm done. I'm gonna try to get another video done as soon as my rings show up. I think you're gonna really dig my uh, info on piston ring and hone finish. And uh, if you think you know hand polishing a crank was funny, uh, you should see how I deck and uh, flatten my head and block. So <laughs> I maybe I'll do a video on that. But there's a lot of stuff I do that I don't show you just because. I don't know how to explain some of this shit I come up with. So uh, go out in the garage, have some fun, do something yourself, watch a little TV, and be productive. So uh, see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.